What's going on everyone and welcome to the last episode of this tutorial on how to build a Cardano stack pool with Raspberry Pi. My name is Giovanni, also known as CryptoJoe101 on Twitter, and today we will see, uh, after a few weeks of a break in which I've been extremely busy, how to restart um, the Raspberry Pi from um, relay mode into block producing mode. So this is actually going to be only a couple of uh, lines of code, it's not going to be too complicated, but uh, um, hopefully we will get it done very, very quickly. I want to remind you that if you like the content uh, and want to like to support me, uh, you can delegate to my stake pool that is called as a ticker easy one. Um, and yeah, that's it. Uh, don't forget to press subscribe and like because I'm also Plutus Pioneer and from time to time I release um, the solutions of my uh, homeworks. So if you are a developer or a Plutus Pioneer yourself or you're curious about Haskell, uh, don't forget to follow and check uh, check me out in the future <clears throat> when I publish content about Plutus. So without further ado, let's go straight into the, uh, the code. Here we are. This is the home page of the project. Um, so here you can see all the content. And then this is the readme. And then we have to go straight to the last step, launch the block producing node. So there is really nothing that we have to build uh, first. We just have to basically uh, stop the relay and restart it uh, in block producing mode with, uh, with the relevant keys. Uh, I just want to remind you that uh, uh, I discourage using this tutorial to run a mainnet, especially if you're not confident and comfortable with all the steps done here. Um, in this tutorial, we're using testnet, so we're using test ADA, so not real money, but um, just a test ADA. So if you screw up with the keys, you loosen, um, the pie burns, and you didn't lose anything. While if you're doing this in mainnet, I would strongly encourage you to go further and to study further what's provided in this tutorial, because um, it's really complicated to uh, provide a full comprehensive guide on how to do absolutely everything and how to ensure about your keys. And even in that case, the Cardano Foundation does not that provides the documentation on how to do that. So does not take responsibility of a possibly lost ADAS wallets or whatever. So I have all the fun of the world in testnet as you can break things as many times as you want to lose your radar many times as you want, because it's just testnet, but in mainnet, please, please, please ensure you check up for the documentation on how to professionally run a Cardano uh, node. The second thing is uh, about the network configuration. And it is again a topic I can't, I can't help, help you out because this is uh, so heterogeneous, so different and depends on um, how you set up your uh, router. Uh, if you're running this uh, with a public IP, if you don't have a public IP, so if you have to record to other um, means to uh, make your uh, Cardano, your Raspberry Pi accessible from the outside, uh, internet again this is another topic i'm going to be covering because it's definitely too vast and i won't be able to provide a uh, comprehensive uh, guides um, and so i'll just leave up to the um, to the reader to uh, to go over this uh, uh, to go over this topic so now that we have um, made a little bit of a disclaimer we can uh, proceed so these are the, the basically the four steps that we have to do it's relatively fast uh, we're going to be basically ensure we are on the same, um, that you are on the latest version of the project. Um, we have to stop the cor current uh, container and we have to delete it because this is running in, uh, um, what's it called, in relay mode. And then uh, we have to delete just the container, the blockchain will be there. And then basically we're going to be starting this um, with uh, um, the uh, in block producing mode. Again, just remember this Cardano node port, I'm just setting 3001, that is the default port that is pretty much used every, anywhere. But if you're using, um, uh, depending on your router configuration, you have to set the so-called uh, NAT or um, port forwarding. So this can be any number that you want, as long as the same setup on your router as well as on your block producing node. And this is gonna basically allow um, other peers, other, other stake pools, other relays, to contact your block producing node from the outside world, pass through the um, router and then hit um, your block producing node. And these are environmental variables that you will have to uh, tweak. Um, 
the pending. In, this one is saying basically that the script is gonna launch the, the node in a block producing rather than delays, relays, relays the default one. So you don't, previously you didn't have to set that up because that would be the default one. Why in this case you have to set that up. A network is of course testnet. If you're brave enough, uh, I still strongly recommend not to use this one in mainnet, but if you're brave enough to do this in mainnet, this needs to be set to mainnet. I kind of think that the default network is still um, testnet, so there is no need for this to be specified, but just put it out there just to be more explicit. And then the last three things, these are exactly the, the three um, files that have to remain on the block producing node. Everything else needs to be secured. Um, whatever you want, but not on the Pi, so that in case your Pi gets compromised, they will not have access to your phones, your pools, whatever. So this is, this, these are literally the uh, case key, VRF key, so these are two signature keys, and then this is the operational chart file. Um, again, we produced this one on the previous episode on how to create the keys. The last thing is basically uh, launch the script with the port number. Actually, I have to switch. I have to fix this one because you should use the environmental variable and not just stick the number here. Um, and here is a little bit of uh, uh, maintenance in case the, pro the, the node crashes and you should start to attempt to report it. And then here is the volume where our keys are. You can customize this one, but I'm just using a default configuration here. So if you want to use a different folder, you have to change this folder here and yet mount this one at this point. Right, so let's copy the first command and then SSH onto the um, onto the Pi that is already running, Docker PS, there is, here it is, our relay running. So, oops, let's copy the first command. Let's go on the latest version. In my case, I was doing some tests earlier on and it's already everything up to date. But if you're watching this video for the first time and following for the first time, you definitely may have uh, some changes here. The next thing is to stop the current node and remove the container. Um, stopping is normal because we have to stop it. The reason why we are removing it is because uh, in this case, those containers are gonna be persistent and we want to name exactly the, 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 the main net content, sorry, the block producing node, we're gonna call exactly the same way. We could potentially call it a Cardano node testnet dash BP, but that wouldn't be clever because otherwise we will have two containers using exactly the same volume and you don't want that. So we will need to remove the, the relay one, just ensure that everything is unlocked and clear to be used. And then there we go, the last comment that is literally uh, launching the, the node in block producing mode. As usual, there is a, a, a quick slip, five seconds, so, so that you can double check if anything is wrong or something, so you can stop it before it starts. Um, and then here it is, it's running, docker ps. There we go, we have it seven seconds, and then we go docker logs dash f to follow the logs and see if things are moving. So if everything is working after you've downloaded the blockchain, you will see that the Raspberry Pi is gonna get stuck at this point for a good five to 10 minutes. Basically what is happening here is that um, the, the block producing node or even just the relay node is, is basically um, exploding and, and uh, rereading the uh, full blockchain and is doing, is doing some sort of validation just to ensure that uh, well, whenever uh, all the blockchain is or whatever it needs to be uh, loaded into memory, memory is actually uh, consistent with what's happening uh, in the rest of the blockchain. Uh, otherwise, either the node either is running in relay mode or in block producing node uh, may not be able to propagate um, uh, valid information blocks and uh, messages through the network. So, um, of course, on more powerful devices, this lasts uh, a fourth of the time that the Raspberry Pi takes. Um, so for instance, you're using this one in mainnet, uh, it may take up between 20 and 30 minutes to just do this part of the computation. It's insane. Uh, but uh, if, uh, if you're brave enough uh, that you want to run this one on, on mainnet, um, you will have to know when you're planning to get your uh, uh, nodes mi uh, um, blocks minted so that you can plan your maintenance time accordingly. And you definitely don't want to restart your Pi about an hour before uh, a block is due because chances are you may end up losing it. And uh, not only waste your own money, but also slow down the entire blockchain. So I would definitely strongly uh, recommend these exercises only to be done in testnet unless you know exactly what you're doing. So this is gonna take just a little bit of time. And when this is done, it will start spit uh, logs. I'm gonna briefly pause the video and I will resume once the logs have started again. 
And that's it. Uh, you can see how the, uh, the, the pool, the block producing log has started to um, produce some logs. You can see uh, how the, uh, the block producing node is checking for the leadership. Basically, every second the, the pool checks if it's the slot, slot leader for the current, um, for the current uh, slot. And then in case it becomes the slot leader, it will produce uh, fetch all the transaction from uh, the mempool and create a new block. In this case, somewhere else into the blockchain, uh, a leader was produced, uh, was assigned and produced a new block. And you can see that the new tip was um, increased to the next slot. If you're lucky enough, at one stage, you will see something like this happening for uh, your uh, pool as well. Um, and with this one, we're basically wrapping up um, this uh, um, 10 episode, I think now, tutorial. Uh, thank you very much for following me. Um, I just want to say that uh, if uh, uh, there is still plenty that needs to be done in order to make this uh, this pool uh, production ready, main net ready. Uh, but this is not an exercise that I'm planning to do just yet. Um, this was just like a, a, a nice way to get you guys involved and just have some fun uh, getting uh, more uh, familiar with uh, with Cardano. Cardano is not going anywhere, so um, you can take one month, three months, six months to to make your own stake pool. And uh, um, so you can have as m all, all the fun that you want in testnet. I would strongly recommend because this is a really fun exercise. And the Raspberry Pi is such a powerful um, toy to play with. And uh, uh, it's definitely a good thing uh, to use and, and to master. And then maybe one day uh, when you feel comfortable and, uh, and you have a better understanding of all the other uh, intricacies like uh, the network configuration, how to move the keys um, in, in a safe place, um, um, then you will feel uh, ready enough and prepared enough and comfortable to run this thing for mainnet. Just remember that I take no responsibility over um, broken hardware or lost ADA because this is definitely possible if you're not comfortable doing all those things or if you only have a partial understanding of how to run a uh, state pool. <clears throat> and, um, and then, yes, uh, I, I, I've, I just want to uh, thank uh, a couple of people that reached out and issued a first of a uh, couple of uh, pull requests that fixed uh, bugs or uh, for instance uh, um, helped on how to configure the Raspberry Pi over Wi-Fi that wasn't something I wasn't really bothered uh, but someone in the community um, produced a nice pager on how to enable the Wi-Fi and it's just really, really nice so it means one less wired around the house and uh, so if there are errors, mistakes, or if you just want to improve the documentation, please feel free to reach out, fork the repo, uh, issue pull request, and uh, I will periodically check, or if you have something urgent, just hit me up in the Telegram channel. There is a link into the description. Uh, reach out to me, and then we can work together to uh, update the documentation super quickly. I want to thank you again. If you like the content um, of these videos, if you like the tutorials, if you want to support me and support the Plutus Pioneer, uh, please consider delegating to my stake pool. And uh, this is really, really much uh, welcome and appreciated. So I just want to say, see you to the next time. Thank you very much for following me. It was an amazing uh, process. I'm really sorry it took so long, um, but uh, I've been really, really extremely busy with the Plutus Pioneer program and, uh, and then many other things have been involved. So thanks and but thank you very much for the patience and the feedback. Uh, so yeah, thank you very much. I'll see you the next time. I hope you really enjoyed the content. Please subscribe, leave uh, like this video, leave a message below, leave a comment and let me know what you think about this. Till the next time. Bye bye.